Some time back, when I was very small, I was so fond of football. Even now, we used to play football once in a while. So, um, so foot, uh, football I liked very much. And then um, we used to go out with my friends from the neighborhood to go for football. But my father was very strict. He doesn't allow us to go out to play. And he wanted us to play in the room, football. So uh, in, uh, he is very strict with us um, because he didn't want us to be spoiled. And, but when he's not there, somehow we get permission from our mother and we'll go. But when he is there, we need, surely we need to get the permission from him, which is an impossible task, but we just hope for it and we try. And one day my neighbor's, neighbor's children, they came and called me. They were standing at that gate and then they called me, asking me to come. And then I knew I have to ask permission because my father was at home. And then I slowly went to my father and I asked permission. I asked my father to, to, for permission to go. Then my father was busy reading newspaper. And then without even lifting his head up from the newspaper, he asked what happened, what do you want? I said, Shall I go for football? Then my father said, immediately he said, no. Well, that was, I was not shocked because I expected this no. And then I just calmed, calmed down. I knew that he, is, uh, he doesn't want me to go. And then again, after some time, I asked him, Father, may I go for football? Then he increased his volume and said, no. And then I knew this is becoming serious. But still, I was not giving up hope because my friends are there pressing on me and they were waiting outside. Come, come. And then I thought, okay, I will give my father one more chance. And then I somehow made him calm down and gave him some time to calm down. And slowly, I was standing next to him. And then I asked him, Father, may I go for football? Then suddenly he kept the newspaper down and looked at me and shout, raised, my, raised his voice and said, I told you no. Then I knew that's the last chance. Then I, was, I told my friends, you can go. And then I went to my room and I cry, started crying and I was so upset. I was so disturbed and I, was, uh, and I, was, I fell on my bed and I started to continue crying. And after some time, it is time for our supper, dinner. And then my mother came to call me for food. Then I declared fasting because I said, I don't want your food. And I declared fasting because that is how Mahatma Gandhi got independence for India. So I thought this is a very good method to declare fasting. And that is the big protest that I can give. So I protested saying fasting. And then my mother felt so bad and she went to the kitchen, I mean, where, where they were all sitting together for food. I could overhear whatever the, they were speaking. And my mother went and told my father, he doesn't want to eat, it seems. Then I was very keen to uh, know what he, the response of my father. Then I heard my father saying, it is good to do fasting once in a while. Then I knew my father is not hurt, but he is so happy that he could save some money by CK saving food. So I was so disturbed, I got up immediately and I went and ate more because I was not ready to accept defeat. And then I showed my anger in eating. And then after some time, that's how I just finished that day. And then after the next day, naturally the children forgets the things, so I also forgot the things. So after some days, Again, my friends came to call me. And then, unfortunately, that day also my father was at home. And then I knew I had to get my permission. And then I was about to ask permission from my father. Suddenly, my, some of my cousin brothers, they came home. Because it was holy day time, so my cousin brothers came. So they come once in a while. So when I saw them, my cousin brothers and sisters who came, I, was, I didn't want to go with my neighbors to play football outside. I wanted to play with my cousins at home. So I told uh, my friends who were waiting outside the gate, I said, I don't think my father will give me permission today, you proceed. But then my neighbors, they were not ready to leave. They said, you ask, maybe today he will give you permission. And then I knew these people are not going to leave me unless I ask. 
So with lots of difficulty, I came and asked my father. And I was praying inside, Lord, my father should not give me permission even by mistake today. So I came and I stood next to him and slowly asked him, Father, do you want me to go for football? Uh, shall I go for football? Then suddenly my father, as he was reading newspaper as usual, and then he said, no. When he said no, I was so happy. I didn't give him one more chance to change his mind. I didn't wait there. I didn't ask him again. I just came running to my friends and said, he said, no, you can proceed. And they left. And I was so happy and I was so proud of my father because he said no that day. So remember, my dear brothers and sisters, it's an ordinary, simple example. But there is something here. Something here. The first time when I asked him permission, he said no, I was hurt. I was hurt so badly. And I even reacted by declaring fasting. But the second time, I asked the same question and my father asked, gave me the same answer, but I was so happy. I was so happy. The first time, same question, question same answer, I was hurt. Second time, same question, same answer, I was happy. And I was so proud of my father. It did not disturb me. So what does it mean? It means it is not the response of somebody who is, which is hurting us. It is our own desire that hurts us. It is our own desire that hurts us. First time I wanted to play, he said, no, I was hurt. Second time I didn't want to go and play, play with the neighbors. And he said, no, I was so happy. So it is not, it is not someone else who hurt you. It is your own desire that hurts you. I think James chapter 1 verse 14, we read like this. One is tempted by one's own desire, being lured and enticed by it. Continue, verse 15. Then when that desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin. And that sin, when it is fully grown, gives birth to death. So my dear brothers and sisters, it is from the desire every hurt happens. I have a desire that everyone should be obedient to me. And when they disobey, I am so hurt. I want everyone to listening to me, but they disobey, I'm hurt. I want my children to behave like this, behave after when they come back from the school, keep the uh, bag here, shoes here and, uh, and uh, the uniform here, but they just do opposite. I'm hurt. I'm, I'm angry. So this is how everyone's reactions. The hurt comes because you desire it. You have a special desire. If you surrender all your desire in the hands of God, then most of the hurts can be healed. Most of the, most of the hurts can be avoided. Praise the, Lord. Praise the Lord. That is why I have given you this example. No one can hurt you without your permission. You give permission. Your desire gives permission. If you have a different desire, you are hurt. You will never be hurt. First day, I had a desire to go for football. My father said, no, I was hurt. Second time, I had no desire to go for football. My father, as usual, he said, no, I was so happy. So I cannot blame my father for hurting me. It is not he who is hurting me. It is my desire that hurts me. My, when my desires are not met, I'm hurt. When my desires are met, I'm happy. So let us deal with our desire first then most of the hurts can be avoided. Let his will be done, not my will. Let his desire be done, not my desire. Let us take this as a slogan, a motto in our life. Let his will be done. It's not my will. Then most of the wounds can be avoided. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.